As you see, every time FreeDOS boots up, the startup files for FreeDOS are fdconfig.sys and fdauto.bat. But if you've used other versions of DOS, you might know that these are not usually the standard names. Why is that? Well, we use fdconfig.sys and fdauto.bat so that you can install FreeDOS and another DOS system like MS-DOS on the same system, the same hard drive, but you can have separate startup files for each. But what if you wanted to use this, the standard DOS names of config.sys and autoexec.bat in FreeDOS? So let's change this FreeDOS system to use config.sys and autoexec.bat. Now, when FreeDOS boots up, it looks for fdconfig.sys, and if it can't find that, it's going to look for config.sys. So we need to start there. We can rename uh, the uh, fdconfig.sys as config.sys, and nothing will change. It, it will work exactly as it was before, because FreeDOS is first going to look for fdconfig.sys. If it can't find that because we renamed it, uh, it's going to look for config.sys, and there it is, right? So there's our directory, and there's config.sys. So let's go ahead and reboot, and we can see that everything is going to continue to work as it did before, because FreeDOS comes up, it looks for fdconfig.sys, it's not there, so it looks for config.sys, and it found it, and the system comes up the way that it did before. So we've dealt with one file. We were able to rename fdconfig.sys to config.sys, but what about fdauto.bat? How can we rename that to be autoexec.bat? Well, to answer that, we need to look again at how FreeDOS boots. So we talked before about how when FreeDOS boots up, it's looking for fdconfig.sys or config.sys. And then somewhere in that config.sys, we set a shell variable. We tell FreeDOS where to find the command interpreter, which is usually command.com. On FreeDOS, we also call that freecom, but it's really the program name is command.com. It also passes a few other options to freecom, but the one that we're really looking for is uh, the one that tells it where to find its startup file. So command.com usually looks for autoexec.bat, but our config sys file tells freecom to use fdauto.bat instead. So we're going to uh, first start by renaming uh, fdauto.bat. Uh, to uh, uh, let's 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 call it uh, autoexec.bat, right? And now we're going to go ahead and edit the config sys. I always like to make a backup before I do that, so let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, copy uh, config.sys to config.back, and let's go ahead and edit uh, config.sys. So you can see this is the startup file for FreeDOS. And a couple of things in here, uh, the DOS dir is being set up the direct, at the top. That's the directory where uh, FreeDOS is located. Uh, we have some stuff in here for the menu. These uh, exclamation points mean that these are always getting executed every time the system comes up. We define the menu. And uh, down here, uh, depending on what option you've picked, one, two, three, or four, uh, you've got uh, different lines that will be executed. So, for example, anything with a 1 in front, well, that's going to be uh, executed if you selected boot option number 1. Anything with a 2 on it before the question mark, uh, like, for example, this one will get loaded when uh, you select uh, menu option number 2. So, for example, this first line, which is uh, 1, 2, question mark, DOS equals high, well, that'll get loaded if you choose menu option one or menu option two, but not, not menu option three, not menu option four. So uh, let's, let's change the first menu item. We come up with menu item one and have that use autoexec.bat instead of fdauto. And so down here at the bottom of the file, you can see there's a shell high. It's basically the same thing as defining uh, the shell, except it's loading it into a higher memory. And uh, so what is this doing? This is telling the system that uh, it's going to use the FreeDOS bin command com program as the shell. And uh, this is where it can find some other information. And we have some environment that's getting set up. And then down here, slash P indicates this is going to be a permanent shell. And then the option to that, the argument to that, is telling it where to find its startup file, which is, in this case, fdauto.bat. And so if I change 
fdauto.bat to be autoexec.bat, then that means, beginning of the line, uh, for boot options one or two, it's going to load autoexec.bat. And so let's go ahead and uh, save this file. Uh, so I'll go ahead and into the menu and I will say file and then say, oops, go ahead and save that. Yep. And then exit. And then if I uh, do a directory, just to remind ourselves, so we have a config.sys instead of fdconfig.sys. And we no longer have an fdauto.bat, but we've renamed that to autoexec.bat. And we've made an edit to config sys that changes boot options one and two to say use autoexec.bat instead. And so now if I do a reboot, now we can watch the system come back up. It wasn't able to find fdconfig sys, but it found config sys. And that's where we got the menu. And now it's loaded freecom and it's loaded the same standard fdauto.bat that uh, we would normally use. And so this is how we are now able to use uh, uh, autoexec.bat and config.sys instead of fdauto and fdconfig. So if you want to be able to uh, change your system to use the more standard names, that is how you would do it. So what about this video and uh, what are the topics would like me to cover? You can let me know in the comments below. Also, I want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much. You make this channel happen. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to recognize you a thank, uh, here as well for that. So thank you very much for that support. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.